You know, Apple has had a large, large number of successful products. Especially yeah. re- especially recently, it feels like, as Mo likes to say, they sold a few. <laughs> By the way, shout out to Mo. He's, uh, he's relaxing in the background today. By the fireplace over there. Yeah. Uh, they've, they, especially recently, man, it's like, even with all the complications and things that are going on, continue to find customers for these things uh-huh. with an Apple logo on them. You know that well? And it almost feels like in certain circumstances, I mean, maybe depending how you want to look at this COVID thing, like it, it seems like some of these products even may have benefited from these world circumstances. Like people upgrading their iPads or when they were marketing the iMac at the event over there, they said, oh, you got a video conference now because you're working from home. Mm. Like they they just, uh, or when they put out the original iPhone SE and I was like, you know, that's a budget phone right there. That's the market's looking for, you know. Mm -hmm. So they've been nimble enough. They keep slapping that badge and customers, they keep uh, ponying up the bucks. They keep lining up at the store metaphorically because they're not physically lining up. And so every time you see these numbers or they have one of these phone calls and they got Tim Cook on there, he's like, we're doing amazing. He's like, everything is great. We break records every five minutes. We're just like Ethereum. (laughs) Yeah. Shout out Ethereum as well. Broke some records today. Anyway, one product where they're doing well, but it just ain't what it used to be. That product is AirPods. Mm. And I mean, a guy like you, Will, immersed in this life you see things like this way in advance yeah guy like you <laughs> yeah <laughs> she laughing about <laughs> nothing just a whole screen just like zoomed in oh okay freaked out a bit okay yeah we're good that wasn't by design you weren't trying to it no, wasn't no, extra no. entertainment value no, 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 zooming no. in it was, uh, it was scary look at that <clears throat> what is happening so What's going on with AirPods? Yes, it is wildly uh, successful, AirPods, AirPods Pro, and there's new ones on the horizon. But what has happened is the heated competition. There's so many options now in a true wireless earbud space, full wireless, all wireless situation. And you know a lot of this competition is coming in at a more affordable price point. But it is still surprising to me, these companies, they chew up some of the market share, claw some of it away from Apple. Hmm. But it's really not all that different than the other segments, is it? Because if you look at smartphones, they always had that premium price tag and they still maintain their user base. Hmm. But I guess if you look at market share, then yeah. It's pretty obvious that global market share trends in the Android direction. So anyhow, anyway, here's the point. We may have seen peak AirPods in terms of market share based on some numbers here. Mm. I think it was our pals at Counterpoint that were doing the crunching the numbers, if you will. And uh, they they determined here that uh, Apple is going to, to cut back the production based on this change in the marketplace. Mm-hmm. They had a planned production of uh, uh, wireless earphones AirPods, and they're going to scale it back 25 to 30% this year uh, as intensifying competition dense sales. So here's how, here's how that works in like big numbers. Apple expects to make between 75 million and 85 million units compared with a previous production forecast of 110 million units. Mm. You know, it's crazy. You read these numbers well. You think to yourself, 110 million units. Man, it's a lot of people. And you know what I started to think about as well? Yeah. I was like, it's it's not just intensifying competition from the likes of Xiaomi and the others that are growing quickly in the wireless headphone space. It's also themselves in the sense that a lot of people who wanted these things already got them. Mm-hmm. How, how often are you going to be able to compel them to upgrade? We know how it goes with phones. Mm-hmm. You've been pretty successful. You say, oh, every couple of years you can get this new phone. Or if it's a guy like you, it's almost every year a guy like lives like you do. Sure, yeah. The big life. <laughs> they figured out a way to bring a certain feature, a different look, a different color. They figured out a way to make you feel like you got to upgrade that thing more frequently. 
Yes. The only way they're going to get you to upgrade your AirPods, I think, for a lot of users is if they just run out of battery, period. They stop recharging and the person's back in the store. Because otherwise, right. it's like, I know these enhancements exist, but for the typical buyer, for the average person, is it enough? That's my question. Mm -hmm. Because it's still a little wireless white earbud. And they're like, my thing's convenient. I listen to the audiobook over here. Mm -hmm. I listen to the Lou later on this, and it sounds just fine to me. Yes. Unless Willie, Willie Do screws up the audio, in which case it does not sound fine to you. Mm -hmm. Because we never actually addressed that. We did it. <laughs> I'm not sure if you want to say anything to the people out there because that was really hurtful to them when uh, that went down. Well, I mean, yeah, it's a terrible blunder. <laughs> and, uh, we apologize. Oh, a double apology. Yeah. <laughs> You know. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, you can include me in that. I do apologize. Yeah. Uh, the most significant. This is the most significant order reduction for the second quarter toward the start of the third quarter. Uh, the levels of inventory in warehouses and in store stocks of AirPods are currently high, and demand is not as strong as expected. Apparently, it's on uh, the AirPods are on sale in China on Tmall, about a twenty five percent discount. Again, an indication of an abundance of supply. Uh, Apple shipped 72.8 million units of AirPods last year, which dominated the market with a 31% share. Now that sounds like a lot, but believe it or not, they were ahead. Of, they were so far ahead of the market, Will, that they owned 60% of it in 2018, mm. and 47 in 2019, then 31 last year. So mm. you see how this goes. It's everybody else is uh, participating now, and the market is just growing as yeah. a whole. For, for true wireless earbuds. And I got to be honest, in a lot of these markets that are probably gobbling up some of this share, it might not even be all that feasible to be looking at a 200 plus pair of headphones. So, mm -hmm. so there you have it. But either way, uh, AirPods are going to continue to sell. It's just that, and there's a new pair on the horizon, which may skew mm -hmm. this to in, in some way. Uh, it's just that as far as share of wireless headphones on the market it probably isn't going to go back to what it was mm -hmm. now that things are the way they are today's episode brought to you by hello fresh you get some free meals and you gotta eat and you gotta eat right yes and because you know i always gotta tell my kids listen you want to get the treat afterwards you're trying to have the whatever you want to have, you know, the chocolate or this and that. You want to have the ice cream, this and that. You got to eat your broccoli. You got to eat something healthy. Sure. You got to, and you know, to be fair, you have one of these meals in front of you here and you can do both. You can eat healthy and you have the empty plate without even thinking about it. Because mm -hmm. I know if there's one thing I know about you, Willie, do. Each one of these plates going to be empty if it ends up in front of you. Oh, yeah. It could be the one pot wonder. It could be that veggie dish right there. You never know. I'll take all of them. It could be the gourmet selection with the fingerling potatoes. You didn't know it's called that. Uh, and you see how that broccoli doesn't look right? It looks a little taller than usual. It might even be broccolini. Oh. <laughs> well, it looks delicious either way. Hello Fresh cuts out stressful meal planning and grocery store trips. You can enjoy cooking and get dinner on the table in about 30 minutes or less, which we've got no excuses right now. Mm -hmm. Hello Fresh offers 25 plus recipes to choose from each week from vegetarian meals to craft burgers and extra special gourmet options. There's something for everyone to enjoy with all recipes designed and tested by professional chefs and nutritional experts to ensure deliciousness and simplicity. Uh, all you gotta do is head to hellofresh.com slash lulater12 don't forget to use the code lulater12 the 12 is important because you get 12 free meals including free shipping hellofresh.com slash lulater12 use code lulater12 for 12 free meals including free shipping you can click the link in the description if that's easier for you just don't forget the code lulater12 go and eat something Please, mm -hmm. because the thing is, when you don't eat, all of a sudden you get all moody. Yeah. And it can't, we can't have all these moods around here. No. Everybody with their moods. And emotions. And emotions. <laughs> if everybody's eating right, 
And then all of a sudden it just clicks. The clarity comes through. Yeah. It's like you just, somebody was eating the uh, beef tenderloin balsamic tomatoes. And then next thing you know, a breakthrough, a collaboration we never saw coming. Yes. Beautiful thing. How about air tags versus tile? Now, you know, these tile guys, you may be sitting here thinking to yourself, oh God, oh my God. We were just, we were making these tiles. People were tracking things. It's all going so well. And the Apple, the big, enormous. The bully. Behemoth has to come yeah. with their air tags. And we were just getting going. Mm -hmm. But you know, it doesn't have to be like that, Well, No. No, it doesn't. It could be the other way around, where Apple comes with their product, and then all of a sudden, if you're a tile, it brings more, more attention to the idea of tracking your items. Mm. And a bunch of, let's say, Android people, they're feeling left out. They're like, I want to stick that thing on my dog. Mm. Could be you. And so you say, oh, yeah, tile exists. So all, all this air tag hype is going on. You're like, oh, yeah, tile exists. So the bigger picture. Oh, maybe it's a bigger picture. Yeah. And you zoom out a little bit. Uh -huh. tile, so tile has a few things going on. I mean, they, they offer a number of different trackers. One might be right for you. Go to the products. You can see you can get Pro, Mate, Slim, and Sticker. They've been at it. They, they've been doing things. Yeah. So the Sticker one is so tiny, stick it to anything. How you, flat you, is it? You might even be rude and stick a Tile Sticker to your Apple TV remote. Oh, yeah. Because that would stick right on there, and, sure. and people were saying, hey, there should have been a tag built into that. That's the thing you lose all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, so they have a number of options, water resistance. They have a slim one that fits into a wallet, like a credit card. Might, might be It might be useful. There you go. I don't know. So maybe they get a little boost from this, or maybe they get, or maybe they go out of business. I don't know what happens here. But it was an interesting little read here over on Mac Rumors. They did a versus mode. AirTag versus Tile Buyer's Guide. Pros and cons. And so I thought, hey, this might be useful, useful to you guys. Just uh, figure out some of these uh, differences here. Because they are there. Now, they both use close-range Bluetooth tracking. They both have long-range community leverage location tracking. Now, this is actually, I got to get to a point here. Here's one of the problems with this. Community leverage location tracking. You know, you know how many iPhones are out there? Find my, oh, I don't know, close to a billion. Mm. So leveraging that, I don't think Tile can hold a candle to such a thing. So the way that it works is the devices talk to each other and oh, then right. they can locate. Oh, they're chatting all right. Yeah. If you have... Find My enabled on your iPhone, which again, I don't sure. know, the speculation is it could be up to a billion devices. Or if you have the Tile application, which you downloaded from the App Store and it's running in the background on either your iOS or Android device, it would be behaving in the same fashion for Tile trackers. But less of them. Hard to imagine is right. that many out there. Yeah. Hard to imagine is the same. Now, uh, one thing you may have been concerned with was battery life. Believe it or not, the batteries are interchangeable here. Mm -hmm. Like replaceable, user replaceable. You already knew that? For both? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's a watch style battery, so you don't have to chuck the thing out. That's uh, beautiful to know. Another advantage on the AirTag is ultra wideband precision finding. That's the thing you saw in the demonstration where you're like walking right to it with the arrow. Oh, right. It's a greater level of precision. Of course, on the tile side, Big advantage is cross-platform. Use it on whichever one you want. Maybe you're in a household with multiple different platforms. Maybe um, Android devices exist in your life alongside I mean, Tile, you can take it from one or the other. So that's an advantage over there. And I suppose another advantage is the variety of form factors that exist on Tile. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be really tough if you're an iOS user to buy one of these right now. Mm -hmm. When you consider that E pre-existing ecosystem that user installed base when it comes to how you track it oh and then the other piece was the the stalking anti-stalker mm. thing that we referenced on a previous show which we were saying hey that's an interesting decision but it may help a thief out uh, obviously the tile doesn't have something like that it doesn't, it doesn't work exactly in the same fashion so mm -hmm. 
Uh, I, I think, given all this that I've just said, I actually think this is going to severely bite into Tile's business. Hmm. I'm going to go ahead and say to you, I don't think that the attention being brought to it is going to have a significant impact on, on potential Android buyers. But I think there's still a business there. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, unless, well, we're going to have real problems here if they put out a pixel tracker, Google. Sure, yeah. Then, then you're coming from, then you're... Or, or maybe Google buys Tile. Can they? Who who owns Tile? Is it somebody? Did Amazon buy them? Did somebody, uh, or are they independent? Let's find out. Hmm. I don't think that anybody owns them. Founded back in 2012. Crazy how long. They've been doing it since 2012, and the big players are starting to care about it now. Mm. Crazy how early you can be. I wonder if they had any interest in a uh, company acquiring them at any point in time. I'd be curious. If got it. Oh, baby. A knock at the door. How about this? A, a 2019 article, Tile finds another $45 million to expand its item tracking devices. Okay. That's interesting. So anyway, they've been at it for a long time. They've raised a significant amount of money. It doesn't look like they were acquired at any point. They uh, have a variety of investors. And they are a top seller in retail stores, such as Best Buy. Be Bessemer Venture Partners is the uh, parent company i don't know it's listed here as an owner I, I believe it's what would be one of the investors yeah ggv capital and francisco ventures so it's a number of different investors but it doesn't look like it's one of the big players so yeah we'll have to see how this plays out um but there are some some technical advantages on the air tag side that's for certain uh sony's experienced smartphone business has reported its first profit in years. Oh, nice. Congrats, so, Sony. So that's good news, especially in a situation where we just had the uh, LG news about them bailing and saying no dice. Like, it just wasn't working out. They couldn't turn a profit. They kept taking a shot at it, and then they said, we're out of the smart smartphone business completely. Yeah. And... I mean, I like to have options in a space. It's nice, especially from brands that I kind of grew up with. You know, there's a little attachment there, mm. Sony being one of them. And maybe they're starting to figure out like a little groove with the prosumer type mm. and the camera types. And we've talked about it, how they kind of embrace the Xperia thing or the A-series thing inside of the Xperia phones. So you kind of felt like you had features from your pro camera and they just, I don't know, did they carve something out? Maybe. Around 400,000 Xperia smartphones were shipped in Q1 2021. Which, by the way, that's not a lot. In fact, what's weird about this report is the last quarter they didn't do well, but it was just when you piled up the whole year. It was the first time in a long time they turned a profit. Mm. So uh, the fiscal year 2020 was the first time since 2017 that the mobile communications division of Sony reported a profit. That's make or break type stuff, Will. Yeah. That was a similar story to LG. 2017, you're in 2021 right now. I don't know if I need to remind you. Yeah. 2017. How old were you in 2017? You were 15 years old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Seems pretty accurate. <laughs> but they stuck to their guns. And uh, now they're... Well, they're not on top. But. I don't know. I mean, maybe they're going to find an audience here. They got all this new stuff coming out. Yeah. They've uh, maybe they found an audience and they have these these narrow phones, high resolution, and leveraging the camera stuff, which they're they're obviously dominating in that space. So, mm -hmm. good luck in the future. But uh, yeah, shout out, make a few bucks, Sony, yeah. stay in the game. Uh, Tesla's head of UI departed the company, and apparently, in the process shared some previously unseen images of uh, the Cybertruck UI. And this, this was a UI guy. He was, mm. you can appreciate that, Will. And so it was some of the Cybertruck UI and some of the full self-driving UI. Okay. That was posted on his website as he left. 
because he was going to kind of do his own thing. And then, it, you know, you put the portfolio on the website. You're like, here's the things I've worked on. Did Tesla come for him? And, well, what happened was it started, people were posting on Reddit. They're like, look what this guy just posted. I don't know. Has anyone seen this before? And then the images vanished from his website. Did he vanish as well? I mean, I hope not. Oh. I think he's still around. Okay. He actually sent, by the way, this article's on Electrek, and he sent a note to Electrek that, hey, none of these images were leaked. They've all been seen before. But then he went to delete it. So I don't know. I Look, man, I don't. Mm. But anyway, the interesting one or the one that seems significant is if you scroll down. By the way, the name of the uh, individual, the designer, Powell Piet, Pietrica. Hmm. Four, after 4.5 years at Tesla, today is my last day. I'll miss these sweet fools so much. Such incredible designers and humans. And he did this GIF. Or actually, it looks like a video clip of himself fading out of the picture. You see that? Where? Well, you see, you see, he just oh, fades away, okay. right? That was really quick. Yeah. Well, he's not there anymore. So <laughs> he is not. And then he's back, and then he's not because yeah. it because it loops. He, he but came back, yeah. but anyway, so he did this little thing, and uh, but as far as stuff that got saved from the website prior to it being taken down, I guess we have here. Uh, the user interface for the Cybertruck. Get a better glimpse at that. Very cyber. Cool. Which is cool. And then uh, scroll down a little further, and you will see a video clip. Um, no, go go further than this. Because I want to see the the uh, new full self driving. Yeah, a little bit more. It's all cleaned up. A little bit more. There it is. Grabbed the new FSD UI video off that website before it got deleted. And so this is an actual video clip of the new full self-driving. So, um, Cool. Yeah, cool. But uh, now it's gone. So I, I don't know. I don't know if it was supposed to be up there or not. But, you know, people keep track of these things. Well, they want to yeah. see the latest. Mm -hmm. This headline really... Uh, <laughs> kind of screwed me up this headline bad infrastructure and not being male among reasons people give up evs you know mm -hmm. do you need me to read that again bad infrastructure and not being male among reasons people give up evs huh interesting they did this why is there a connotation it's a weird way of writing it and the comment section got got fired up and obviously that's the point with a headline but it isn't Jonathan. No, but it's real though. It's I mean the data shows it. So it's not like really? uh, Yeah, the data shows it. So oh. anyway, 20% the this study was in California. 20% of Californian EV adopters gave up plugins. Study finds. So this is people who previously owned an electric vehicle and then on their next purchase, they decided to go back to to a full out gasoline car. This is not a thing that often you often hear about. Wait a minute, how many people get, went back? You hear about adoption rates, but what about how many people quit on electric cars? Like twenty percent is pretty significant. Uh huh. They say, um, "Oh, that, that wasn't worth it." <laughs> um, I wonder why. I bad infrastructure. Is it is California that bad? So what it is is it's okay. There were a number of correlating characteristics to the individuals who are more likely to give it give it, give them up mm. and i will break down every single one of those those that quit the ev lifestyle were more likely to have smaller households and have fewer vehicles in the household so what does this tell you kate's your only only option for a car in the whole household they were younger earned less rented more hmm. okay so a little note on the rented more it's tough with the rental you're you might be saying anything well i got the superchargers it's okay if i don't have the charger at the house right. or a garage which yeah. often with a rental you might think i'm going to be just fine but then you find yourself 45 minutes at the charger every couple nights and you say mm. what am i doing my life right yeah. now might not be worth it and uh, also on here we're less likely to live in a detached house so again less likely to have a garage and we're less likely to be male than the Californians who stuck with EVs. Hmm. 
So that's the one line which gives you the headline, which causes people to go, uh, I don't know, to get twisted up. Mm -hmm. But it's statistics from their study. Their study, I guess it was uh, 1,727 households. And it's not the hugest study, but it's relative. I mean, it's kind of significant. Yeah. So, so essentially what it's saying is that for whatever reason, males were li more likely to stay with EVs once having gotten one. A slightly more likely than females amongst all these other characteristics which, which mm. could lead you in the direction of but I'll just say I'll just give you a piece of my own like never mind the male females I'm not I'm not getting involved in that people do what they're going to do people choose what they're going to choose mm -hmm. there are benefits and drawbacks on both sides and I'm not one of these people that like you're evil if you're driving a gas car or you, you know the only way forward is I mean Maybe eventually the only way forward is the EV car, but I'm not going to go out there and say that it's right for everybody right now. No. It's just not. And so from personal experience, I got the electric car, but I have other cars. So it's not even fair for me to act like yeah. some superiority. Like, it ain't like that. There's certain circumstances where, like, there's many times you saw my car parked and charging, and I'm driving some other one across the province mm -hmm. or something like that. Mm -hmm. Across the province? Oh. Yeah, maybe I was. Yeah, okay. Maybe I was. I don't know. Um, but there are some considerations with me, especially the one I have. It doesn't have tremendous range. The Taycan Turbo, mm -hmm. Turbo S is around, oh man, it's hard for me to say, but it's under 400 kilometers. Right. It's under 400 kilometers. And I'm used to having, I've had a number of cars up in a seven, 800 mm kilometer yeah. on a fuel tank on a, on a on a full fuel tank and so it's uh you know it's just it, there are certain circumstances where it's not as convenient now there's other times where if i've got it here always charging up i never have to think about going to a gas station yeah so that's a beauty that's a bonus as well uh -huh. so it's a benefit and drawback situation but i for myself my lifestyle Oh, the 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 family and everything else. If I if we as a household could only have one vehicle, there's no way it's gonna be an EV right now. No, yeah. there's no way. There's no chance. Mm -hmm. there's, it just wouldn't be. Yeah. No, I hear you. Right now. I get it. Right now. Yeah. Right now. That could change, of mm -hmm. course. But there's a couple things. It's not just having the charge stations. It's the time it takes. If we can get these much faster chargers out there, I'm talking whatever we were talking with the EQS, uh, was it 200 kilowatt? If we can get even faster, if it can be a situation where it's like 10 minutes, that's a different story. If I can pull off the highway and in 10 minutes, I'm back and ready to go. And I know. Yeah, it really is the charging, isn't it? Faster absolutely. Charging. I, I mean, it's if you're on your way to a tournament, a sports tournament with the kids, and you're going to pull over for 45 minutes. I don't care if there's a nice mall there. You, if, if you were late taking off and and yeah. you, there are certain situations. Yeah. I'm saying. And once they can tackle, once they can get across all of those off the list and then they have the performance and then they have the environmental and then they have, then it's a wrap. So mm -hmm. that's where, that's obviously where the folks, I mean, I don't, I'm, I'm not breaking any news here. That's what they're all working on. Yep. Everybody's trying to figure out how to charge faster and have more locations to do such a thing. Mm -hmm. So... It's only a matter of time. Yep. Uh, Halo Infinite will support cross-play and cross-progression on Xbox and PC. Hmm. Uh, I think that the people are going to celebrate such a thing. No, this is great. M multiplayer customization and progress will sync across PC and Xbox. And then also for multiplayer games themselves, you're playing from both groups, both pools, mm -hmm. which is nice. So you're probably on, on the PC and you're on the... Yeah. On the Xbox, and this is one of the areas that Microsoft can really leverage. Yes. Because they're in both places. Uh, Microsoft is announcing today that Halo Infinite will support cross-play and cross-progression when it launches later this year, allowing PC and Xbox players to match together and play Halo Infinite campaign. So you can play the campaign together oh, nice. as well as multiplayer. Uh, the multiplayer mode will be also free to play when it launches. So it's going to be one of those... Fortnite situations. Yeah. Call of Duty. Call of Duty. Warzone situations. Yeah. Are there any other hot ones right now which are free to play? 
because uh, I feel so dated saying those two titles. But maybe they're still what people play. I don't know. Apex. Yeah, Apex. But yeah. Warzone came out after Apex, no? Yes. Yeah. They're the big three, I think. There's maybe no PUBG. big free to play right now that's more current. Am I nuts? Uh, not that I can think of. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm sure someone's shouting. There's probably some. Anyway. Well, when, it, when it launches later this year, it'll support up to 120 FPS in the arena mode on the Xbox Series X. Mm. And then the customizations are going to have to be available across both of them. So 120 FPS multiplayer on a console? Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, they would probably have to figure out balancing issues with the PC, Xbox, controller, mouse kind of situation. It's not going to be an easy task. Yeah. But Warzone kind of started it. You know, mm -hmm. um, but we'll see. Will you be playing this game? I mean, we all got to play, right? Whoa. Yes. Whoa. Yeah. You took your hand off the mouse. You pointed I'm at me like that. You. Yeah. Um, okay. Would you rather? I mean, you're a hello guy. Would you rather play on uh, PC or on Xbox? Hmm. That's a good question. Uh, old school, probably just console. On the Xbox. The okay. Yeah. All right. You heard it here. Uh, Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin is soon going to take your money. They are selling tickets, or they're going to soon sell tickets. They're taking the pre-registration to buy the tickets. So they want you to sign up to be one of the first to buy the tickets in order to take a ride on uh, the space tourism rocket. Mm. So they put out this little promo video. Uh, it's called New Shepard. It's designed to carry as many six people on a ride past the edge of space with the capsules... Uh, reaching an altitude more than 340,000 feet. So the full details apparently are coming May 5th with possibly the option to purchase at that time. Now, let me ask you before... Okay, you can play a little bit of the video if you like. Okay. So this is a promo video, and you're going to notice a few tidbits. Pause right there. Pause right there. So first off, Bezos is driving... This is noteworthy. A Rivian. He's driving a Rivian. Amazon, yeah. Amazon invested in Rivian. Yeah. Right? Be or Bezos himself, whatever. There's money in Rivian. So he's in a Rivian. He's flying. He's in, where is he? He's in Texas. He's got the hat on. And he's saying, here we go. He's a real space cowboy. And of course, it uses some of the footage of the landing yeah. of the rocket and then the capsule coming down. A la SpaceX. Floating down style. three parachutes. And then he approaches the thing. And he says, looks pretty good in here. Something along those lines. Oh, okay. But look at him flying in the Rivian with the, with the logo on the side, the leaf on the side. Jesus. Yeah, excessive speed. Yo, he's flying in the Rivian. I mean, this is uh, not very necessary. Oh, it is. It's an action it? movie. Oh, yeah, it's an okay. action movie, and he's the star. All right, it's yeah. time. Sign up early. Learn how you can buy the very first seat on New Shepard. You can buy the first seat on New Shepard. Now, before we get into it, what are you willing to pay for the first seat mm. on New Shepard? You're going to you're going to space. You're going 340,000 feet, and you're going to go past the edge. Uh, Seat number one, Willie Do. What are you willing to pay? Uh, five Dogecoin. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to get it done, Will. Hey, man. It's not going to get it done. Yeah, Worth maybe by then, by May 5th, you'll be all set. <laughs> exactly. By May 5th. It's not going to get it done. What, what do you actually think the tickets are going to sell for? By the way, I know the answer to this. Uh, I mean, I really don't, but I kind of do. What do you uh, think they're going to sell for? 200 grand. It's not a bad guess. Okay. They did not say the price, but they did oh, say... What? No, no, they did say it will be similar to the other prices that are out there. Like Virgin Galactic? Exactly. Okay. And so, actually, what's funny about this CNBC article is, because, is that they said Virgin Galactic stock was down 3% because of this video. <laughs> oh. I mean, I don't know if it's because of the video. They just said that. They just said it was also... Because when you're CNBC, you always report on that type Yeah. Of. Anyway, if you scroll down, I think you're very close. You said 200 grand. I think it's around 300. Okay. Uh, there it is. No, two, 200 to 250. Willie do, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that. Willie do. Or five Dogecoin. Willie do, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Willie do. Quit. Quit. Virgin Galactic has sold tickets to 600 passengers at a price between 200 and 250,000. Although the company expects it could increase its prices substantially for the first commercial, so maybe it goes up. But I like where Willie Do's heads at. Not only is he calling the celebrity fights, now he's calling the space flights. Mm. 
Hilly, Willie do, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Ha, ha, Willie. Ha, ha, Willie do. Wow. A lot of emphasis there. Yeah, that's right. You must have heard about this one. Walmart is coming after Kanye West. You heard about this one, Will? No, I didn't. He was showing off, I guess, what might be, could be, maybe is the new Yeezy logo. And Walmart said, hey, that's our logo. Chew up to. And he also had happened to be reading. Remember that picture emerged? He was reading a Walton book. One of the Walmart founders. Was he? <laughs> I'm, I mean, I'm just going deep now. I just remember a okay. picture. He was reading up on it and people make sure I'm right about this. Because people were like, why are you reading that book? Walkton? Walton? There you go. Yeah, there you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. Oh, you had it, dude. Where? Uh, oh, maybe you didn't. You got to put you got to put Kanye West Walmart book. And then we're going to get it. There we go. Wal oh, wait a minute. Maybe not good enough. Oh, this is going to be tough. You're getting the latest news story more than the other one. But I'm telling you, a few days ago, he was holding on to... Now, you, now you're making me want to look. Walton Book. Read. Oh, here we go. Seven days ago, Kanye West... Oh, is it on Twitter? Reading a book about entrepreneur Sam Walton is inspiring because it shows that even a billionaire is always learning the next generation going to be reading books about Kanye West. Okay, so he had the Sam Walton book in his hand. Okay. So it's kind of interesting that, I mean, this was that was posted seven days ago or whatever it was around there. And now we have Walmart upset about his new trademark mm. application. Now, though, there's two trademarks. Okay, Walmart is on the right. It looks kind of like a sun. It looks like a good, so it's kind of, I'm going to get a good price on something. <laughs> like, yeah. So it looks like a sun. It has these tubular kind of uh, spikes, I guess. Now, the Yeezy logo, the proposed Yeezy trademark, is not the same number, is it? It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight spikes. It's the same, isn't it? No, it's not. Oh, no, no, no. No, there's an extra line there in the center. So, and then it's dots instead of these solid will wants to say something. No, no, no. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, you're describing I'm... Uh... No, no, I know, but but I felt like you had a strong react. No, it was just a deep inhale. That's... Okay. Go on. So it's the Yeezy logo on the left. It's the Walmart logo on the right. And what happens is when you go to the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, any company that sees something that looks like theirs, they can uh, challenge a logo or trademark and say, no, it's too much like ours. Because hmm. the Yeezy trademark application is pretty recent. Obviously, the Walmart one's been around for a while. The Walmart logo since 2007, and the Yeezy documents were first filed or uh, proposed logo in January 2020. Okay. So, obviously, it's more recent. Yeah. Now, the question becomes, are they so similar that you feel like Walmart has a point or are they different enough that you're like, what are you doing, Walmart? What's your thoughts on it first? Oh, no, you really don't <laughs> want to answer this one. Okay, all right. Give you a couple shots here now. Apparently, Walmart's been trying to get in touch with Yeezy as well. And uh, to date, we have not received any conclusive information from Yeezy regarding the planned use or any cooperation from Yeezy in order to find common ground. So they were trying to get in touch with Yeezy to say, look, we just want to make sure you're not opening stores with that logo, let's say. Big blue stores with that logo. Right. Like, like usually what happens with these things, they want to know, okay, how are you going to use it? Yes. Yeah. If it's no, if it's not crossover to what we're doing, then we can just find, make a deal. Sure, yeah. um, well, apparently he hasn't been responsive to it. I think they're different enough. Mm -hmm. That's my feeling. I, 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 I realize it's roughly the same shape. And in this picture, roughly the same scale. But yeah. the dots for me are different enough. Well, is, this, is just the, uh, this is just the logo. They don't have the Walmart. No, is that no. the logo? No, that's, that's, that's the logo right there. Oh. 
is uh yeezy's brand gonna have like some other um, it might I, I presume they could use it however they see fit right mm -hmm. they could put yeezy the word beside it or right. not it's up to them right now yeah color would make a difference as well sure <laughs> i mean if yeezy becomes yellow and blue that's going to be a problem uh but i agree with you i think it's different enough yeah you know and yeezy's a big business by the way reportedly now worth 6.6 .6 billion or that's Kanye. Apparently, oh, the Gap deal is worth three point two. Hmm. He he is reportedly worth six point six billion, and the Yeezy partnership with Adidas and his clothesline Gap are worth a combined three point two to four point seven. So anyway, whatever. It's billions of dollars. So uh, I guess Walmart wants to find out. But yeah, I, I I don't know. Maybe it's been hard to. I don't know. I think they're different enough. Whatever. Yeah. All right. Uh, this next one, first of all, before I get into it, do you know anything about this particular dish? Uh, Lu Luosifen? Uh, the controversial smelly Chinese soup noodle dish that went from obscurity to durian level fame. Oh, the no. noodle dish divides opinion sharply with some families. So it's a noodle dish, which in it you have a certain type of bamboo which is fermented and it's a very strong odor hmm. and now some people who are eating this thing say it's a it's a game changer really some people who are eating this thing are saying it's the most addictive oh some people who are eating this thing say it tastes marvelous the more of it you have the more deeply you will love it this is a quote from weibo uh let's see what else i got third commenter wrote I often tell my friends who dare not try this food, how do you know it tastes bad if you don't have a try? Mm. I didn't eat it before, but after I ate it, I found a new world's door has opened to me. It's really yummy, trust me. Or, how about I treat you? <laughs> Man, the translation there. <laughs> oh, I got, I got better ones. I got better ones. Hold on, hold on. Uh, first of all, a little background. Okay, so it partners rice noodles, stock soup, stewed for hours with river snails and pork or beef bones and sour pickled bamboo shoots. It can also include peanuts, fried bean curd sheets, daylily, black fungus, dried turnip, and sometimes green vegetables. Hmm. Strong, odor, strong odor is from the bamboo shoots, which have been fermented using a secret recipe. When I eat this at home, everybody in my family will keep a distance from me. They told me to hold my bowl and go outside. They said they don't dare to touch my bowl and pot that I use to cook the noodles and want to throw them away because of the pungent smell. Wow. Oh, here's a good one. A Chinese student in Italy was fined 40 euros for cooking lu luosifen at home after his neighbor called the police suspecting there was a bioweapon in the <laughs> Oh, wow. It smells like a bioweapon, but yet it opens new doors of flavor. Uh, Let me ask something. You give it a shot. Would you give it a one time shot? Yeah. You give I it a would. one time. You give would it a one you? time. Well, yeah, I give anything a one time. Most things I give a one time. Sure. Yeah. Many things I give a one time. Maybe not everything. <laughs> hmm. Uh, they're pre packing it now, by the way. I don't know. Maybe we can find it at TNT. They're pre packing it. Oh, so okay. last year, the revenue from pre-packed lu Luos I'm going to have to figure out how to say that. Lucif Luosifen, made by factories in, in that region, reached $1.7 billion. So I don't know if they're exporting it or not. Maybe we can get our hands on it. If so, uh, this place is going to... I wonder what the dogs are going to think of it. Yeah. With that smell. That's a real test. Yeah, with that smell going on. But anyway, there you go. I found some... I don't know. I don't know if anybody knows about it. <laughs> I don't know if anybody's heard of this stuff. I'm sure someone's eating. Someone's going to say in the comments, yeah, I have that every day. It's the best stuff. Oh, so it's like instant noodles now. Yeah, pre-packed. You can find oh, it. Cool. So I don't know. We're going to have to keep an eye out. Maybe we sure, have a little yeah. live taste test, see how we make out. Yeah. Um, here's a story. Adam Sandler was in an IHOP and, uh, with his daughter. Mm -hmm. And then he got turned away. From the restaurant 
because there was too much of a weight. And then the person who told him that didn't realize it was him until after. So they posted on TikTok about how they were a clown for not realizing that it was Adam Sandler. Adam, wait, Adam Sandler tweeted or TikTok about it? No, a TikToker. Oh, a TikToker. A TikToker TikToked about it. Okay. And uh, decide to call themselves a clown for not noticing such a thing. Mm. And but this is none of this is what I like about the article. <laughs> what happened? There's one thing that I really like about the article. Okay, so anyway, first of all, I like how casual he's he goes out. I can really relate to that. He's got a North Face hoodie. It's like yeah, peace. Some baggy shorts and some comfortable shoes. I can relate to that for one. Oh, by the way, the video has gone viral. 9.7 million views. That's TikTok for you. Just yeah. Right. But here's, a, here's one thing that I don't really know. So uh, people pick up the story. She posted it. So at what point did she realize it was Adam Sandler? Because in the moment she didn't. No. So she went to look at the camera, I guess, and figured out it was? Yeah, probably. She's like, maybe that was Adam Sandler. Yeah, this guy looks familiar. And then went to the camera. She's like, that was Adam. Okay, but here's the best part. Here's my favorite. This is my favorite part of the whole thing. Sandler's publicist confirmed to the Huffington Post that it was Sandler. <laughs> <laughs> what? What a weird. Just yeah, I represent him. That's him. Just imagine how that would go down. Yeah. Okay. So they say the clip is going viral. So does his publicist call him up and go, is that you at the IHOP? And he goes, yeah, that was me. And they go, do you mind if we tell the press that it was you? And he's like, no, I don't care. And then they go back and they say, we'd like to confirm that is our client, Adam Sandler, <laughs> in the IHOP in a North Face sweatshirt. Like, run the article. <laughs> <laughs> We're good to go. I just, I don't know. There's nothing funny about that to me. I don't know what it is. It's like such an official means yeah. for an announcement of something that's so insignificant mm -hmm. it's just he was just there waiting but i kind of love it all right here's the last one researchers determine which dogs more often establish eye contact with humans mm. so here's the thing about this one eye contact with a dog is important because it's a way in which they can build a relationship and a bond. And it's a way in which, I mean, particularly really high level, like a service dog, for example, yes. needs to be on that level, on that wavelength yeah. of constantly interpreting whether the person is in distress or if they need some help or whatever it might be. But here's the thing. There's some physiological barriers to a dog's ability to actually make contact with another human. You want to know what that barrier is? What's that? Their nose. Their honking nose? Their nose. The dogs that are most likely to make the eye contact have the shortest noses. Hmm. When a dog has a longer nose, the eyes tend to be more to the side and they have a much harder time focusing on a human face squarely in front of them. They, huh. they have a wider field of view. We, we, we once showed this, how animals see the world on a previous episode. So they see a wider field of view and potentially far more distraction in that field than the difficulty in focusing squarely in front of themselves. Hmm. A greyhound is on the far end of the spectrum. Huh. On, the, on the front end of the spectrum is dogs like boxers, dogs that have the eyes right on the front of the face. Yeah. With a short nose. A short snout. A, a short snout. Yeah. You see how the eyes are right there, almost like a human positioning. Yeah. This is not a thing I, I ever I ever heard about or ever thought about. Hmm. Dogs adapted uniquely well to live with humans and communication plays a vital role. They're sensitive to the direction of the human's gaze, which helps them decide whether a message is directed to them. Forming eye contact with the owner raises oxytocin levels in both parties, which plays a role in developing social bonding. They tested 130 family dogs, they examined them. The boxer, bulldog, pug, and snub-nosed dogs in general have a more pronounced area centralis in the retina. 
so they can better respond to stimuli in the central field. Because yeah. you're up close with the you're up close with the dog, they can't even. Yeah, you know what it's like. Your nose is in the way. If you're trying to focus like right here, isn't that wild? Now, because of this limitation, dogs like that dog over there had to develop other way, means in which to interact, which sure. is which what which is why this dog over there, according to their study, is more likely to respond to the audio cues. Mm. Or to alternative physical cues like hand motions and pointing and things like this, mm. as opposed to the visual cues of the human face and the human emotion. Wow. I wonder how much uh, visibility they lose if their nose is in the way. Well, d squarely in front of them? Yeah. Quite a bit. It turned out the shorter the dog's nose, the faster it made eye contact with the experimenter. They see the human face more sharply because of their special retina. It's also possible that they, that they over time have grown accustomed to it mm -hmm. because it could be the way in which humans look at them. Mm -hmm. Right? Like if you have, uh, they're saying here that these dogs more resemble an actual human face. Yeah. Like a small child. And therefore maybe people are more also more likely to look at them squarely in the eye. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, you ever notice anything like this with your dog as far as the uh, eye contact is concerned? No. No. I, mean, I, he, I always thought all dogs, like, it's more of like a personality thing where they would want to look at you if they wanted to, you know? Well, yeah, actually, you, it was like a hindrance. You that, have a sled uh, dog. You have a sled dog. Yeah. Listen to this. Non-cooperative sled dogs running in the front of the musher can only rely on vocal cues. Uh -huh. So it's going to be, you got uh, Otis over there is going to be more vocal. He is definitely vocal. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm saying he's going to respond to your vocalness oh, more. Mine? As oh, opposed okay. to strictly visual. I don't know. That's what they said in this study. They had like well, under he's... 200 dogs. So obviously there's going to be, uh, there's going to be, yeah, and a I, fluctuation I, over here. I think uh, personalities has something of to do with it too. Of course, know? of course. Yeah, what a crazy project! Shorter-headed dogs, visually cooperative breeds, younger and playful dogs form eye contact faster with an unfamiliar human. Hmm. This is interesting stuff. I don't know. I find it to be interesting, but um i'm gonna go try and look at my dog in the eye and see what happens yeah but i feel like i've done it effectively i don't know where her where she lines up her nose is not that long but it's average the snout <laughs> in man. the dog spectrum we're gonna put this to the test sure <laughs>